This live martial arts class, we're going to talk about sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Or another way to say it is toughen up, buttercup. Grab your chuck in the middle. You're going to spin it with the string or the chain side coming out of your hand, palm facing the sky. I don't like to just talk at you. I'd rather work together. So we're going to snap the nunchucks around. After this basic move, good evening, Sensei Emmett. Turn it over. Since Amit mentioned to me in an email recently, he's getting ready to do the 100 man Kumite. Means he's gonna fight 100 guys, one after the next. Since Amit, that's pretty tough stuff, man. I would say toughen up, Buttercup, but you're already tough. Turn it over. When I'm talking about tough, I'm not really talking about being physically strong, although there's a correlation. The more you train your body, the more you train your mind, the more you can train your spirit. Turn it up and down. Get your figure eight going. But I'm talking about knuckle up, buttercup. Toughen up. Sticks and stones may hurt my bones. Literally, you take this stick and you smash it as hard as you can against the bone in the hand and the wrist. If it's hard enough, it'll break. You take a rock, smash it against someone's face, it's gonna cause some damage. You call them a name, or someone calls you a name, or says something about you that's not true, no matter how mean and malicious and ugly it is, it's just words. And it's your choice, whether you give them your power or not. We're going around and around. Hello, Garen. It's good to see you. We're doing this figure eight for the warm-up. Put it in the other hand. Palm faces the sky. Doing your outer orbital. I always do the same warm-up. That's why you'll get better faster. You do a little bit of the same every single time, over and over again. Palm up. Palm down. Garen, since AM, it's here. He said he's going to do a 100-man kumite. Uh, for charity. I love that. What a great thing to do. Hey, Steve, it's good to see you. Turn it down. Turn it up and down. You're doing your figure eight. Get the blood to flow into the joints. I like working with weapons because you hit yourself. When you hit yourself with a hard weapon like this, there's a little bit of weight there. It's metal. You feel it. That's a good way to toughen up buttercup. Turn your hand over and back. And anytime I'm talking to you, I'm also talking to me. So if I tell you to toughen up, I'm talking to myself. From here, I'm going to put it back into the first hand and reverse the whole thing. I'm just pulling it up and back, in toward me for a reverse spin. I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to spin it on the inside over here. I'm going to put those together. As you can see, I'm already kind of warmed up. It's nice and warm outside. The sun is shining. So I thought I'd go get some exercise in. Do a little bit of calisthenics to come in, spend some time with you. Spin in the chucks. I'm talking about the whole purpose of martial arts. Put it in the other hand is the toughen up, Buttercup. Learn how not to be so sensitive to what people say and what people might think about you. Who gives a snot what they think about you? It doesn't matter. It's not going to add food to your table or take food off of it. Not unless you let... Matthew, we're doing chucks right now, talking about toughening up, and I chose the chucks for you, Matthew, because I saw in a previous post, you said how much the chucks are your favorite weapon. So I thought, I want to talk about toughening up, knuckle up, get tougher, don't let words have so much impact on you, don't give away your power and react when people say things or do things that are ugly or nasty, take your power back, don't have the same reaction that they expect. So I thought, Matthew, we would do the chucks. All right, now, I wanna talk about one move after we've done this warm up, and that is the throw and the catch. I'm gonna show you how to throw a catch with the same hand, throw a catch with the opposite hand, and how to put it together so you can use it in your trick. And I need more room, so I'll back up the camera, see more of my sweatiness, bringing it around. I'm like this all day, by the way. I start at nine o'clock in the morning teaching the little kids, kindergartners, then second grade, then third grade. When I go back, in about 10 minutes, I got two fifth grades back to back. I'm gonna come back here, teach four more classes. But I stay sweaty. I think it's good for you. You bring it around, you're gonna let it go over here, and it's gonna do a full revolution. It's gonna do a full turn to here, and I'm gonna catch it down here. Steve said he cut his knife, his finger once doing knife training. I don't know if you can see all of the scars on these hands and fingers from all of the stupid things I've done with the knife, Steve. I'm right there with you. You bring it around, you let it go, and you let it do a full turn and you catch it. 
I was going to say let it go about 11 o'clock. If you take the clock, uh, 12 o'clock or midnight, noon, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 11, let it go at 10 or 11, you're going to catch it at 1 or 2. Let me grab them off the floor. That's the key, by the way. You want to learn how to do anything with the chucks, any kind of tricks, pick them up every time you drop them. And you're going to drop them a lot. Don't, don't, don't allow yourself to get defeated and get frustrated. You can get frustrated, just don't quit. That's how you toughen up Buttercup. Nunchucks are maybe the best weapon that you can practice with to get mentally strong, become persevering in everything you do. Learn now not how to quit or learn how to not quit. Don't give up, never stop, keep going, push yourself, just refuse to quit. Whack yourself in the head, keep going. Hit yourself so hard that your ears ring and you see the little stars and there's a little bit of blood coming down your cheek, wipe it off, take a deep breath, cry a little bit if you have to, that lets it come out. Pick up your chucks and keep going. Toughen up, buttercup. Then put it in the other hand and reverse it. It's just counterclockwise motion, which means you're gonna let it go at two. Bring it around over here, ideally, about 10 or 11 o'clock, catch it again, and here's the key. When it comes here, it's gonna come around and I'm gonna catch it with the palm facing down. I'm gonna let it go here with the palm facing down. It's gonna go around like that and then I'm gonna catch it palm facing down. So it's going around, let it go, catch it. And when you drop it, pick it up. Don't try not to drop it. If you're dropping it, that's a good sign that you're doing something you're struggling. You're struggling. Beginning of this school year, I was in the uh, classroom. I won't say which one. And I heard a teacher say to, oh, that's not true. This is last year. Um, it was my son's class. And she's not there anymore, so I can say it. And the teacher says to the students, right as I walk in, I don't want you to struggle. I about lost my mind. I thought, <laughs> how are they going to grow if they don't struggle? What are you talking about you don't want them to struggle? In a general sense or just on this one thing? I stuck around, I asked some questions, and she meant in a general sense. I don't want you to ever struggle, sweetheart, baby, buttercup. I want everything to be nice and easy for you, sweetheart, little boo-boo. So let me give you the easiest thing I can give you, and let me water it down. Let me give everybody a trophy just for showing up. No, <laughs> you're not going to grow. Someone's going to come one day and try to stick this right through your face, and you're going to be so soft and so sweet and so afraid of life that you're not going to be able to defend yourself. Yeah, welcome to Welcome Mary. Amen. Not us, right? We're going to toughen up, Buttercup. Knuckle up, toughen up. Let it go and now catch it with the palm facing up. Remember, this is the difference. When I let it go with this hand, I catch it with this hand, the palm faces down. When I let it go with this hand and I catch it with the opposite hand, your palm will face the sky. You're still going to let it go about 10 or 11 o'clock on this imaginary uh, old style whatever clock, round clock, but I'm going to catch it over here, still one or two o'clock in the other hand. Then I just reverse the spin. Let it go, catch it. Reverse it, let it go, and catch it over and over. And I hope you struggle. I hope this is hard for you. I hope these fall and smack you across your face and it gives you a little bit of a bruise and it makes you a little nervous to do it again. And then I hope you pick it up and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again until you become stronger. It's like push-ups. Push-ups never get easy. You just get stronger than the push-ups, but only when you push. You gotta drop, hit the deck, and push. Now go to your figure eight, and I'm gonna let it go over here behind me, and then I'm gonna catch it in the opposite hand. My figure eight, to the front of the body, let it go, and catch it. I saw I turned to the side and I saw, oh, I better suck it in a little bit. Pull, right? And if you're, <laughs> if you're worried that your gut sticks out too much, eat better. Eat better food, don't eat so much garbage, do some more sit-ups, do a lot of push-ups, some squats, and then suck it in a little bit. Keep your shoulders back and down, stomach up and in, pull your chin back, toughen up, buttercup. When you look strong, you'll feel strong, you won't be so emotionally fragile that the words will hurt you. Remember, sticks and stones may hurt your bones, but the words only hurt you if you let it. You're gonna let it go over here. And like I said last time, 
Find somebody who's 35 years or younger, maybe 40. I think we need to raise it up to about 40. When, when do the millennials start, right? Find the millennials in below. No, no offense to millennials. It's not your fault. It's my fault. It's my generation. It's all you old people. It's our fault. We turn the millennials into what they are. So we can't moan and groan about them. And then the younger generations, we're complaining. The kids today get 12 place trophies. Well, who's giving it to them? Mom and dad and grandma and grandpa show up and they're all smiles and they're, right? Stop complaining. We did it so we can fix it. So you tell them, make it your mantra. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but the words, they're not going to hurt me. You're going to go around, let it go, and you can say to somebody, look, you don't have to like me. Don't talk to me like that. And then if they keep talking to you like that, walk away. You don't have to hang around somebody like that. But at the same time, you don't have to act like it doesn't bother you. Let it bother you. You say, look, don't, don't tell them. Don't think that if you tell them how it makes you feel, that's going to make them stop. They know how it makes you feel. That's why they're doing it. If they're calling you a name. If they're picking on you. If they're teasing you, they're doing it because they don't like you. They're mad at you. They want to see your reaction. Negative, screaming, whining, complaining. Instead, tell them. Like a, like a six-year-old. Like a six-year-old from... Three generations passed, because six-year-olds now don't even know it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Now you find a young person, 40 years or younger, they almost would rather get smacked in the face by a big piece of concrete than someone say that they didn't like their Instagram post. That's an over-exaggeration, but I think you know what I mean. All right, you guys have been awesome. Practice that skill. We'll do more of that later. I have to go teach the fifth grade.